Well, welcome back. This is Greater Devotion, and I'm Pastor Brad. And today I want to ask you maybe a little bit deeper of a question, but have you ever really thought about what it was about Jesus that the apostles left everything that they were doing to follow him and live their life really for him and were willing even in the end to give their life as a sacrifice to their obedience to Christ? You know, these are really good questions, and I think for all of us, we all have different reasons why we follow the Lord, and, and maybe we even have different reasons why we think that the apostles and those early disciples followed Jesus. But you know, there was something very significant about who Jesus was that really convinced them of his claims. You know, Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. He claimed to be uh, the Messiah. He claimed those things for himself, and he was killed for those reasons because of those claims. Of course, we know ultimately he was killed for our sins, but understanding that the reason why they had grounds to do so was because of his claims. Well, it was those claims that the apostles and those who followed him, those early believers, it is those claims that they hinged everything on. And there was reasons why they really believed in all of that. And there's reasons why they really followed him. And I want to share with you, this is Peter's testimony. This is what Peter says in the book of 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16. Here's how he puts it. He says, For we did not follow cleverly devised myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his what? His majesty. You guys need to understand something. And this is even an accusation that gets made against the church and against the scriptures and against Jesus himself, even today. Well, those are, you know, stories that were made up about Jesus. Or there's this idea that the early church, you know, made Jesus into this divine being, that there's sort of an evolution of of understanding Jesus from just maybe this uh, prophetic teacher to, no, he's the son of God, right? And so there's there's some of these ideas that get, a, that, that get thrown out there that are accusations against what we believe and profess about Jesus Christ, namely that he is the son of God and that he is God incarnate and that he did these miraculous signs and wonders when he was on earth. Well, you know, even Peter is making this you know, uh, uh, I guess answer, he's given this answer uh, to those who would accuse him of just making this stuff up. He says, look, we did not follow cleverly devised myths. And he's acknowledging that a lot of religious stuff can be found in cleverly devised myths. These aren't myths, though, he's talking about because he says, look, we didn't come to you with, we didn't make this stuff up. You know, we're, we're coming to you telling you the story of who Jesus was. And he tells them this because we were what? Eyewitnesses. Not only that they were eyewitnesses of Jesus, because yes, they had some really neat things to talk about because they had witnessed Jesus and had been a part of his ministry. But you know, that wasn't really the, sin, the clincher, the censure here. For them, the reason why they were passing on what they had learned is because they were eyewitnesses of not even his works, there were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And you see, we've talked all week about the majesty of God. God is bigger and greater and, and far beyond our comprehension. You know, and Jesus is like that because he is the imprint, imprinted, uh, uh, the imprint of God's nature, and he is the, you know, he is God in the flesh, so he takes all of that incomprehensible stuff and he makes it somewhat comprehensible for us but understand that what they saw in Jesus wasn't all the things that we might relate to it was that majesty they saw the incredible majesty of God in Jesus in other words they saw all of the authority all of the power all of those things they saw in Jesus. And that, in and of itself, is what convinced them to do all that they did to follow Jesus, 
to be obedient to him after his crucifixion and resurrection, and then ultimately to die for what they believed and professed. Majesty. Jesus reigns in majesty, and it is his majesty that testifies to who he really is. And so we need to grasp a hold of that majesty. And so if you haven't thought about it much before this week, I hope this week has got you to think a bit about it. But understanding that is exactly what testifies to who Jesus really was. And it's the reason why we can have confidence in following him today. And on that good word, let's close with a simple prayer. Lord, we thank you because your majesty testifies to who you are. And Lord, help us to grasp a little bit of just that awe and that wonder that would make an apostle faint before you, that would make us maybe even want to cower in fear before you. Lord, you've made it approachable, and you've given us the ability to stand before you and cry out even, Abba, Father. But Lord, I just pray that we can tap into that majesty, and Lord, that we can live with confidence because of that demonstration of your power that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks again for watching. Go ahead and click the like and share button today. If you want to leave a comment, would you just leave a comment? How has thinking about this this week opened up your mind to just how amazing God is? I'd love to hear those comments. Until we see each other again, remember to show somebody a little bit of kindness, love, and respect even today. And beyond that, come on out. We want you to be here. We started the Be Here movement this last weekend. It's kind of a joke, but the truth of the matter is we want you to be here. So if you can make it out, if there's nothing in your way, please come and be here live and in person, a part of what's going on here in this fellowship of believers. If you can't, we understand some people just still can't be here and, and understand that there's grace for that. But uh, if you can't, please join us. We're going to be live at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. Uh, so hope you can join us. We'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.